Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch, and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. can't even believe I'm going to say this, but I am in the studio and the wax is turned on. I'm actually going to be in here painting uh, and painting for the first time in months. And to be completely honest with you, I debated about whether to even pick up the camera and record any of this because I have no idea how this is going to go, having not painted for Oh gosh, it's probably been at least six months, I'm guessing. At any rate, um, I'm gonna flip this camera around and kind of show you my setup and what I'm thinking about doing. All right, so here's the setup. I've got encaustic medium over there, melting and some encaustic white paint on this griddle melting. It's probably gonna take a little while, but that's fine because I have a lot to set up still. And if you can hear that creaking, my floor creaks in here. <laughs> All right, anyways, I've gotten out one of my sketchbooks because I keep saying I wanna fill these up. So I'm gonna attempt to work directly in it. And um, this sketchbook is the collage sketchbook and some of these, these these pages are clearly not done some of these pages already have um, acrylic paint on them so i'm not going to use these pages because um the i don't think the encaustic will stick to that i may eventually tape in some um, encaustic collage pieces into the book but i really want to see if i can collage directly onto the sketchbook itself and what that will do to the pages as um, just a little bit of an experiment. So I'm flipped kind of to the back here to one of the first blank pages and it's got some bleed through but I'm just going to ignore that and collage right onto this blank page. At least that's the plan. All right, and you might recognize this from the journal flip through that I did a while back. This has a bunch of collage materials in it. So I'm just going to pull out a pack, no idea what's in this, and just start with this. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Um, looks like maybe tea stained or coffee stained, maybe rust, piece of paper. Uh, this might be a little thick. We're gonna find out. Uh, some scribbles. Oh, wildflower little bits. Uh, this is pretty thick too, so we're gonna find out. Um, well, this is kind of fun. I have stitching on this. Looks like maybe some deli paper, magazine pieces. That's a little weird. <laughs> uh, we'll see what side of that I use. And uh, another book page. So yeah, let's see how this goes. I should also say I have no idea how I'm going to be filming this. Um, I haven't done um, much filming of painting, rather any filming of painting in this new studio. So. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to get the camera set up okay with this setup here. 
and uh, we'll see and hopefully the lighting is going to be all right um, so anyways if if the video quality isn't great give me some grace here and if the lighting quality isn't great um, you know just have some patience I'm going to be working through all of that while I work, work through getting back to painting all right, voiceover Stacy coming at you. I'm going to try to explain briefly what I'm doing with these collage papers. And that is I'm adding some encaustic medium to them. And you'll see every once in a while, I kind of take that brush and dab it around on the pancake griddle. And that is because some of these papers have bleed through and I don't, or rather they leak <laughs> whatever's on those papers. As you can see there, I left kind of a black residue. And I don't want to contaminate my clear encaustic medium by sticking that paintbrush back into there. I'm also applying some of that clear encaustic medium to the sketchbook. So the collage papers have encaustic medium on them and so does the sketchbook. Sketchbook has about two or three layers, I believe is what I put on. And then the sketchbook, I have to fuse between the layers and I'm using the heat gun to do that because the papers are, I don't want to catch anything on fire using a flame or the torch. And once I get that papers kind of laid out to how I want it, I take out my phone and take a picture. And that way, as I'm peeling the layers back off, I remember what piece of collage bit I wanted to go down first, second, third, etc. Then I'm just heating all of this back up with the heat gun using a metal spoon, kind of pressing down all the edges to make sure everything is adhered down nicely to the collage sketchbook. And I've decided I needed to blend some of these edges in. So I'm applying oil stick to it and just trying to kind of blend everything together so it doesn't look like stuff is just stuck down on top of each other. And I go back and forth between oil stick and heating that up, scraping it off, adding some more encaustic paint, a lot of back and forth here. So I'll let you sit back and enjoy this portion of the video and a bit of music. completely convinced on this and it's not done but um it's a start and there's certain parts that I really like and other parts that I think are just overworked and are just uh so so but um I also earlier I put this tape on here to kind of um mark off like where I wanted to do the collage portion. So I'm gonna attempt to peel that off and see how it goes. 
looks like it might work. Oh, it's pretty thick in certain areas <laughs> where there's a lot of wax, but um, yeah, actually works pretty good. So, um, oh, and I also, this sketchbook I think is going to work great for the encaustic collage. Now, the only thing is I'm not sure, like if I do another collage on this side, all of this will probably melt. <laughs> So I think I'm probably going to have to do every other page maybe, but um, this is the back and there is just a little bit of bleed through. So um, that is good. All right. So the whole kind of point of doing this collage -y background was I'm thinking of a new series, which would involve sketches of plants and trees. And again, I could be totally off here. This may not work at all, but um, this I put onto tracing paper and there's encaustic wax on it. And so what I want to do is see if the tracing paper is too thick to put over the collage, like if you'll still see these edges and it, it'll just look like a piece stuck down over the top of a collage. Um, so I'm going to try to stick this down the same way I stuck the collage down and, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I think this is definitely going to work. I don't think you can see the edges at all. And, um, you know, next time I would simplify the background a bit more and things like that. But the whole point was to see if this would work. And also to see how this um, works in this particular sketchbook, the encaustic and stuff. So I would say overall, it's a win-win uh, here. All right, I would say that the first painting session in this studio space went really well. I'm not a huge fan of the sketch and how it turned out, but there's definitely a couple things that I've learned and I'm really excited to keep going in the sketchbook, keep experimenting. And uh, so yeah, stay tuned for definitely more paintings. And I will, if this works out, I'll start to slowly fill you in on what the new series is going to look like. I have a lot of thoughts rolling around in my head, but I wanna make sure that I can um, kind of accomplish them and Today was a great start for testing out the collage and um, if that tissue paper would show through. Uh, so yeah, so win-win here. Thanks guys for coming along and um, I think I'll probably pick you up tomorrow. Today I have to run out and do a bunch of errands for the pole barn. So um, stay tuned for that. I'm going to um, hopefully put a little few snippets in towards the end of the video of how the pole barn is coming along. But I'll probably pick you guys back up tomorrow here in the studio because I have a few more things I want to get accomplished this week here. All right, today is the day to remove the stuff up there in the loft, or at least a lot of it. <laughs> really excited about this move here. Back in the studio this afternoon and um, this Christmas cactus is doing so well. I hope it continues to do well. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you, but I think it's about to bloom. So um, that's really exciting. Not why I picked up the camera, but I'm in the studio and so I'm going to flip the camera around and also show you what I'm doing today. So this big painting here got slightly damaged in traveling to the art show. And um, it really has nothing to do with the stability of the wax, it has more to do with how we packed it and traveled with it. 
So right here on the corner, sorry about the clicking, the wax is heating up in the background. Right here on the corner, you can see some wax got chipped off of that. So my plan today is to fix that. And because I make my own white encaustic paint, I am hoping, fingers crossed, that the white will match up with the white in this painting. Um, I don't have like a set recipe and perhaps I should have a set recipe. I just kind of um, measure out the pigment uh, in not a very exact way. So um, hindsight maybe is 2020 here. Perhaps going forward in the future, I will measure out the white paint in a more exact way or the rather the white dried pigment in more of an exact way so that I know exactly the white recipe and hopefully the white will always be white or the same white, I should say. And while that wax heats up and melts down, I thought I would show you, I made a trip to the local library today and got out some, what I think are pretty interesting books. I'm doing a bunch of research for a possible new, possible new series. So um, let me show you these books because I'm finding them interesting. I thought maybe you might. All right, here's the stack of the books. And I wanted to show you two, I think, well, they're interesting to me. I don't know if they'll find them interesting. But this is folklore specifically for the county that um, we moved to and if I open this up it's so funny because it's it's like typed out right so I don't know how old these are these folklore stories but um, I kind of really can't wait to read them all and the librarian there said she had never seen this before it actually came in from another uh, local library and so I think it's really gonna be interesting to read. It's only a few pages. And then the one underneath is um, a folklore of all of West Virginia. So um, I'm also looking forward to this. And this is um, obviously more in a book format than the other one. But um, yeah, it should be interesting, I think. And then the rest of these books are trees and plants from West Virginia. And so I'm looking forward to diving deeper into these as well. Just to get an idea, I want to do some research on native plants and maybe what they used to be used for versus what they're used for now and kind of maybe how it has affected um, the state and perhaps the plant itself, even the tree itself. So looking forward to diving into these. And then this is, which I've never heard of, fossil plants. So, sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera and flip through. I, I really don't know what a fossil plant is or if it's fossils made from plants, but I'm looking forward to um, diving into this book and finding out what exactly a fossil plant is. And lastly, I got a small skinny little book on the fall colors here in West Virginia and also winter botany here in West Virginia because I thought, you know, winter is quickly approaching and fall is here. So I thought these might be interesting reads for this time of year to also figure out what type of trees we have on our property and what type of plants we have on our property. And this one is interesting because it's just showing like the, the twigs and branches of the tree because obviously, not maybe, maybe not obviously, but most of the trees around here, of course, lose their leaves in the winter time. So um, I think this will be interesting to flip through and maybe go on some winter walks and figure out perhaps what kind of trees we have on the property. And then I did get just one, um, I guess, generic, not specifically a guide to trees, not just specifically for West Virginia, but um, all trees. And I was just flipping through this and somebody actually stuck a leaf in here, whoever had this book checked out last time. So um, there's a little preserved leaf in here. So kind of fun little find. 
So I checked out all of these books for, like I said, research on hopefully a new and upcoming series. It's going to be a while for that series. But um, I wanted to see if any of them would be worth um, purchasing in the future going forward just to have on hand completely for this entire series or rather while I'm painting this entire series. So I just kind of wanted to get some sneak peeks at them. And um, yeah, if you're interested in a more of a flip through of any of these, um, I can definitely do that. Just let me know. I didn't want to bore you by going through all of the pages in these books. If you're not as interested in folklore of West Virginia and or trees and plants of West Virginia as I am. All right, after all of that blabbering, the wax is now heated up. So it's time to fix this chip in this painting. And first I need to tape off the edge of where the I'm going to fix the painting because I don't want any wax dripping down onto the frame that's already been painted and finished. I'm just using some painter's tape to do that. And I'm just really taping this one little corner because I'm not going to be working on the entire painting. If I was going to work on the entire painting, I would tape off all of the edges. Um, anyways, using the torch today, and I'm just going to fuse really lightly just in this little corner to heat up this painting just a bit because it's been sitting for quite some time. So going to be using the white paint, fingers crossed it's going to match. And I basically take the paint using one of these clips to over to the painting. So I'm not dripping paint all the way across my work table. And I'm just kind of dabbing and dripping small amounts of this white paint onto the painting to try to fix that. And then, of course, I need to fuse between each of these little layers here. But you'll see there's just a tiny little amount that I need to fix this chip. And again, fusing that down with the torch so that it sticks to the layers underneath. And I'm now, I remembered I used this orange India ink. So luckily I did remember what color orange ink I used here. So that'll really help blend this into the rest of that orange area in the painting. I have to let that ink dry now that I just put on there. But um, I just wanted to show you, it's really easy to fix a chipped encaustic painting. Just a little heat, a little bit more wax, and it's like new again. Coming up next, pole barn, barn dominium re renovations going on. This is going to be it for the studio painting portion of the video. So if you're not interested in Barn Dominium fun things, which I hope you are, but if you're not, I completely understand. This is going to be the end of the painting portion. So I just want to remind you, if you did like it, give it a great big thumbs up. It really does help me out before you leave. Hopefully you're going to stay tuned and here you go. Barn Dominium. That is a sure sign that winter's coming. 80 degrees today though, snow in a week. <laughs> Happy Saturday. Back in the pole barn and um, it's definitely a crunch time. It is supposed to get very cold at the end of the week. So we need to get as much done in here so that we can move the camper back in and we don't have freezing water and pipes and damage in the camper. So um, big push this weekend. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what we've been doing over the past uh, couple evenings. Right in the bathroom, huh, there's actually a hot water tank. Oh my goodness. The uh, water is not hooked up, but the electric is. And in the bathroom, Matt has been working very hard at 
mudding and sanding these walls. And I don't know if you remember how tall that drywall stack is there, but we have five more sheets of drywall to hang. Just five. From the kitchen, we have moved on. into the workshop area. And that insulation there, you may recognize, came from the studio loft. Now what are we gonna put up there? <laughs> Perhaps art supplies. Husbands. No. drywall has been hung, mudded, taped, sanded, not necessarily in that order, but now it's time to prime all of this drywall with some primer just to keep all the dust in and uh, make it a lot easier when we go to paint the walls. Very exciting day. See that in the background back there? We've got a washer and dryer. No toilet, <laughs> no bathroom sink, no working shower, actually no lights in the bathroom, and no other working plugs, but we've got a washer and dryer. Very, very exciting day. Campers getting moved in. The bubbles coming in. Grr, it's getting cold. <laughs> I am going to miss waking up to this beautiful view, looking out in the morning at this gorgeous property. However, we are feeling incredibly blessed that the weather has held off and allowed us to finish the sanding, mudding, and the dusty parts before we had to move the camper in. And also incredibly grateful that we are going to have a nice warm area to sleep in during the winter. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Seeing the sketchbook process, I'm super excited to be back to painting. So um, if you've missed me painting, I've missed me painting. So I'm really excited to be back. Stay tuned next week. There's going to be more painting, I hope. Barring anything happening, there's going to be more painting. So stay tuned for that. And if you are also here for the Barn Dominium fun, thank you for following along on that journey. It um, is a process, that's for certain. <laughs> All right, so this is where I'm going to leave you for the video. Don't forget to give it a great big thumbs up if you liked it. It really does help me out. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. That also helps me out immensely. I am so close to a thousand followers, guys, so close. So um, I would really appreciate you liking the video and subscribing. At any rate, we will see you probably next Tuesday. Bye for now.